Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, October 17. Jamaica is on track to achieve 30% of its electricity coming from renewables within two years. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made that pronouncement on Tuesday during a function at Jamaica House. This would surpass the national energy policy target, which calls for at least 20% of the country's energy mix being renewables by the year 2030. We now have a combined supply of just about 120 megawatts of renewable electricity power, which is currently in our grid. And that will put us to about between 15 and 18% of electricity generation in the next two years. So it's quite likely that we will achieve the 30% by 2020. Quite likely, if we continue at this pace. With that goal on track, the Prime Minister says government's new target is for renewables to supply 50% of the country's electricity generation by the year 2030. I think that that is doable. So, pushing our energy generation to be 50-50 by 2030 uh, fossil fuels and renewables. That is in our national security interest, in our survival interest that we do that in Jamaica. Mr. Holness was addressing Tuesday's commissioning of solar photovoltaic panels at the office of the Prime Minister, which should reduce the office's electricity bill. The project was led by the non-governmental organization Solar Head of State in collaboration with the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, National Energy Solutions, the Clinton Foundation and other partners. It included a Jamaica Solar Challenge competition with Ryan Bent winning the top prize of $75,000 for composing a song to communicate the benefits of solar energy. The state of public emergency in St. James will remain in effect until January 31 next year. Prime Minister Andrew Holness successfully led a resolution in the House of Representatives on Tuesday to allow the enhanced security measure to continue. All 47 members of the lower house who were present voted in favor of the motion, 16 MPs were absent. Before the vote, Prime Minister Holness asserted that the state of emergency had been successful in reducing murders in St. James, which had a homicide rate of 182 per 100,000 prior to the operation. Over the period 1st of January 2018 to the 11th of October 2018, the St. James Police Division accounted for 77 murders and 86 shooting incidents. This reflected a 53% decline and a 67% decline respectively in both murders and shooting incidents when compared to the same period in 2017. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has also voted in favor of extending the Zone of Special Operations, ZOSO, in the St. James community of Mount Salem. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the 60-day extension will give the state space to successfully continue its social intervention activities, which have complemented the security operations. Today, the high rate of gang-related violence, which previously characterized the community and the police division by extension, is no longer at the level it was prior to the declaration of the zone. In fact, over the period 1st of September 2017 to the 11th of October 2018, the community experienced no murders or shooting incidents. Mount Salem was the first Zoso to be declared in September 2017 and it transitioned to the build phase in February 2018. To date, that has resulted in a number of roads being rehabilitated, while 115 households have had their accounts regularized by the National Water Commission. Going forward, the Mount Salem Primary and Junior High School will be expanded and upgraded, and a new state-of-the-art infant school will be built. In other news, government has purchased three new garbage trucks to boost the capabilities of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. The units, which were bought at a total cost of approximately $74.7 million, were presented to the NSWMA by local government minister Desmond McKenzie on Tuesday. They will serve Metropolitan Parks and Markets, Western Parks and Markets, and Northeastern Parks and Markets. Each region will get one unit to improve their waste collection and transportation. Minister McKenzie says even more trucks are coming. By the end of 
this year, early January, an additional 12 trucks will complement the fleet and by year end 2019, we are looking at close to 50 brand new trucks for the National Solid Waste Management Authority. The minister urged the workers to take care of the units. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government is investing in the country's sporting infrastructure to build Jamaica's capacity to host more international sporting events, including track and field. The government has already started the process under the banner of Jamaica 55 legacy projects to improve the national stadium complex here, the Trelawney Stadium, the Chedwin Park, sporting complex in St. Catherine, Draxall in St. Anne's, and uh, the Herb McKinley Stadium in Clarendon. The Prime Minister was speaking at Sunday's unveiling ceremony for the Statue of Olympian Shelly Ann Fraser-Price at Statue Park in the National Stadium Complex. He paid tribute to Shelly Ann's phenomenal successes and said he hoped the statue would serve as an enduring inspiration for all Jamaicans, especially our girls. For her part, the world and Olympic champion expressed gratitude to the government for unveiling the statue in her honor. It is my hope that this statue will serve as a testament to the fact that where you come from and how you start life are part of the story. What you do with what God has given you, the ability to do, is more important. Do not be limited by your history. Instead, let us make history. The statues of fellow Olympians Veronica Campbell-Brown and Asafa Powell will join those of Shelly Ann and Usain Bolt next year. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.